thinking about this text in Matthew, but we're also going to be thinking about a text in, in the book of Ruth. And so <clears throat> I need some readers. I need a narrator. I need Naomi. I need Ruth. I need Orpah. And I need some women. Do I have any volunteers? All you're doing is reading. Yes, you want to just come on up? I'll give you a script. Yeah. Are there any hard words? Eh, maybe you don't want to be the narrator. <laughs> Who would you like to be? Um, you, you get to choose. You might need a, a translator. Translator, that's not. You can speak Southern. We're okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Who, you, but you got to pick. Okay, I'll be the narrator. You'll be narrated? Okay, you're going to be who? Naomi. Naomi? Okay. Yes. Who are you? Are you Ruth or Orpah? Oh, Ruth, I guess I'll be Ruth. Okay. Do you want to be Orpah? It's a really hard part. <laughs> okay. Yeah, That's we got like five words. <laughs> and this is, you want to be the women? Anybody else want to be a woman? Ben, you want to come to one of All right, I'll be one of them. I'll be one of Anthony Scazzafato volunteered to be the woman, and his falsetto is gorgeous. <laughs> okay, so what I want you to, from the top, we're going to read this story. This is from Ruth chapter 1. Before Israel was ruled by kings, Imelech from the tribe of Ephrath lived in the town of Bethlehem. His wife was named Naomi, and their two sons were Mahan and Chalon. But when their crops fell, they moved to the country of Moab. And while they were there, Imlech died, leaving Naomi with her only two sons. Later, Naomi's sons married Moabite women. One was Orpah, and the other were Ruth. <coughs> About ten years later, Mahan and Jalan also died. Now Naomi had no husbands or sons. When Naomi heard that the Lord had given his people a good harvest, she and her two daughters-in-law got ready to leave Moab and go to Judah. As they were on their way, Naomi said to them, don't you want to go back home to your own mothers? You were kind to my husband and sons, and you have always been kind to me. I pray that the Lord will be just as kind to you. May he give each of you another husband and a home of your own. Naomi kissed them. They cried and said, We want to go with you and live among your people. But she replied, My daughters, why don't you return home? What good will it do you to go with me? Do you think I could have more sons for you to marry? You must go back home because I am too old to marry again. Even if I got married tonight and later had more sons, would you wait for them to become old enough to marry? No, my daughters, life is harder for me than it is for you because the Lord has turned against me. They cried again. Orpha kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth held on to her. Naomi then said to Ruth, My daughters, why don't you return home? What good will it do you to go with me? Do you think I could have more sons for you to marry? You must go back home because I am too old to marry again. Even if I got married tonight and later had more sons, would you wait for them to become old enough to marry? No, my daughters, life is harder for me than it is for you because the Lord has turned against me. They cried again. Orpha kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth held on to her. Naomi then said to Ruth, Look, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and to her gods. Why don't you go with her? Ruth answered, Please don't tell me to leave you and return home. I will go where you go. I will live where you live. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. I will die where you die and be buried beside you. May the Lord punish me if we are ever separated, even by death. When Naomi saw that Ruth had made up her mind to go with her, she stopped urging her to go back. They reached Bethlehem, and the whole town was excited to see them. The women who lived there asked, Can this really be Naomi? <laughs> and she told them, Don't call me Naomi any longer. Call me Mara, because God has made my life bitter. I had everything when I left, but the Lord has brought me back with nothing. How can you still call me Naomi when God has turned against me and made my life so hard? The barley harvest was just the beginning when Naomi and Ruth, her Moabite daughter-in-law, arrived in Bethlehem. There we go. The word of the Lord. I think Sarah did a great part. <laughs> And I, and I don't remember what's, what's, what, what was what was uh, Anthony's line there. Can this really be Naomi? That's 
what he said. Yeah, it, was, it was fantastic. Let's bow our heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we think about this scripture and about the one that Sheila read for us, open our hearts and minds to your presence in your word that our thinking and our doing might be transformed by your grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is Mother's Day, and it just seemed appropriate to have a, a reading from uh, the scriptures that talked a little bit about mothers. In this case, it happens to be mother-in-law and daughter-in-law, uh, daughter-in-law. But it is a fantastic story uh, of a unique relationship uh, between some people in, 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 our, in, our, in, our, uh, in our world that are often uh, kind of the, the brunt of the jokes of comedians, you know, moms-in-law. Uh, moms are pretty, pretty precious. And this scripture reminds us a little bit of how precious they can be. Uh, one of the contexts of finding this passage in Ruth is that I was asked by the Presbytery uh, to come and preach at its next meeting at Middletown United Church uh, at their, one of their six meetings of the year. Uh, I've been in the Hudson River Presbytery for 30 years. Uh, we have six meetings a year. That means that there have been 180 preachers. Finally, they got up the nerve to ask me to come and preach. Think about this. Um, and uh, they gave, us, uh, gave me a context. Uh, the theme for the year is Micah 6 8. Micah 6 8 uh, says that if you want to do what the Lord wants, if you, you, you all know what, the God, what God requires of you, uh, that you do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. And what they've decided is that each of the six preachers will preach on either doing justice, loving kindness, or walking humbly with their God. We're in the first rotations of I'm preaching on loving kindness. Now, some of you are also aware that Presbyterian ministers are required uh, by our preparation standards to take a year of Greek and then learn how to translate uh, the uh, Greek New Testament and use it. And then we're required to take a year of Hebrew and then take a year uh, to uh, learn how to translate the Old Testament in Hebrew. And so one of the things I did, and one of the things that the moderator has asked for, is to go back and look at the Hebrew behind Micah 6.8. And when it says, love kindness... The word that you find there is the Hebrew word chesed. you got to say it so that there's a little bit of spit falling at your mouth. Chesed. Chesed is the word that's used for God's incredible pursuing kindness when he refuses to give up on the Israelites. That in spite of their disobedience and unwillingness and unfaithfulness, he continues to come after them with kindness because his devotion to them and love for them is so great. We are to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Now the reason Ruth comes into this is because Naomi says that Orpah and Ruth have shown her kindness. And the word that Naomi uses there is chesed. Ruth and Orpah have pursued Naomi with a kind of kindness that is overwhelming and devoted and consuming. It's interesting because that, that's what I think motherhood is very much about. Is your mother with kindness, sometimes with a ruler in her hand, but hey, that's uh, some of your story, I know. Mom pursuing you because she is so devoted to you and wants to enable you to become the person you are. I know some of you are sitting there and saying, wait, wait a minute, my mother was a pain in the neck. Or some of you are saying, my mother wasn't very good at this. I'm going to get a little closer <laughs> in a second. Some of you are really struggling with moms, and that's all right. It's understood. No one does this perfectly, and there are some moms who have really messed this up bad. But what motherhood shows us at its very best is what it is like to be pursued by a God who loves you so much. He is unwilling to give up on you in any circumstance. God will pursue you and show you kindness until the very ends of your life because you are his and he is devoted. God is devoted to you. Pretty cool stuff. It's interesting because the story goes on in the book of Ruth. That Ruth travels, of course, with Naomi back to Bethlehem. Right? Um, and while she is there, um, because of her devotion to Naomi, because of her unwillingness for Naomi to live a life, uh, as a widow by herself because of her unwillingness to have 
Naomi not have the financial support that a husband and sons would provide for her, um, Ruth goes about the work to make sure that Naomi is cared for because this passionate kindness that Ruth has for Naomi uh, is not going to be broke. She's going she's to see it through. And it leads her eventually to Boaz's fields. You remember the story where she goes and she goes with the gleaners picking uh, the, the, uh, the uh, grains out of the field so that she can take them home so they can make bread. Uh, Boaz recognizes who she is and finds out what an incredible person she is. She, here's the story of this daughter-in-law who has a family at home, who has a mother at home, who has decided that Naomi should not have to live by herself, and so pursues her with kindness. Boaz hears about this and asks her to come and join along with his, uh, his servants who are in the fields as well, and to provide protection for her, and to provide, because Boaz chooses to be kind to her. You've ever heard this story about, you know, uh, uh, I do something nice for you, and then I say to you, well, you do it for somebody else, and it kind of rotates around. Boaz recognizes chesed when he sees it. And it's interesting because um, when Ruth then goes and pulls the blankets up off of Boaz's, I always thought this was a romantic story. I, I'm rereading it now. She pulls the blankets up off the bottom of, of Boaz's feet and she lays down at his feet because she's saying, you know, I, I want to be married to you. You're, you can be my protector. Boaz's response to that is not, oh, that's so cool, but... This young woman is showing me chesed, kindness, God's kindness. When she chooses instead of pursuing young men, which in the, in the language there is, is the hotties. When she chooses not to pursue the hotties who are wealthy or fantastic but instead chooses the root of kindness, she reveals to me that she has God's heart at the very center. That's what moms are about, revealing God's heart in their own limited way so that we can see what God really has in store for us. That God is pursuing us with his eternal kindness, loving us, trying to provide for us. We are given the opportunity to respond not only that, but it is clear from Micah 6 8 that we are responsible to show that kind of kindness to the folks around us, devotedly caring for them with our whole heart, with God's whole heart in us. This is the good news. Let us pray. Gracious God Almighty, we thank you for the wonder of your word. It challenges us to think in new ways. May it be so this day. We ask it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.